do a countertop uh, restoration. We're gonna get rid of the ugly green colored uh, Formica top that we've got and uh, put a Rust-Oleum countertop transformation. Okay, so here's the Rust-Oleum countertop transformation kit. It says it'll cover 50 square feet. This one here is the desert sand. And basically these are the basic steps. First, you start by sanding the countertop. Then you apply the adhesive base coat. Then you use this spreader to put the chips down. Then you actually have to sand smooth the chips. And then you put the pr protective top coat. The kit comes with just about everything that you need. This is what the kit includes, is all this stuff. You also need these other things that are not included in the kit. A couple rollers and some brushes. So you want to make sure you have that stuff available before you start your project as well. Okay, so here you can see the bathroom countertop is a uh, green color, uh, really outdated, kind of looks bad. This is a rental home that I have that I'm going to be selling this year and just want to do an update. So what we've started with is I have took the mirror off um, so that we can uh, paint that wall a little bit better. We're going to replace that light fixture as well to give it an updated look. It has the old uh, gold brass looking uh, light fixture there. And we're going to uh, paint this a uh, tan uh, countertop restoration kit from Rust-Oleum. Um, you can see I've removed the sink here. Uh, they say you can tape around the sink um, rather than having to remove it. In this case, it um, didn't take too long to uh, remove it. And you don't have to be overly concerned about scratching the top because um, you're going to have to sand this gloss off anyway um, to get the base coat of the Rust-Oleum down so we chose to pull the, um, the sink off. Okay so one of the first things you want to do before you paint the countertop with the first base coat is clean out all the corner edges any silicone that might be in there. The tools I use to do this uh, standard razor blade scraper, another little putty knife, a flat headed screwdriver, and uh, be careful not to cut yourself, but um, this razor blade actually worked pretty good uh, to get down in there in the edges. I was able to just kind of stick it in there like this and work back and forth. Um, to scrape it out of there. That was actually one of the better tools I used, but I used all four of those and then you can just kind of scoop it into a pile and clean up and get that uh, all the silicone and stuff out of there. Uh, you don't need to worry about scratching the countertop because you've got to go through and sand the countertop with a, a special sanding pad. Okay, so your next step is to take this diamond embedded uh, sanding block and block, sand off your all the gloss spots on your countertop. And then make sure that you wipe it really clean and get all the dust off before you apply the base coat. The next step after you've got it all sand and cleaned all the dust off the top of the countertop you want to make sure you tape off all the edges and put some plastic down. You can see I've put a lot of plastic down here. Mainly what this is is just to trap all the paint uh, chips, the little chips that go on to the base coat on here. They're not sticky or wet with anything but it sure makes a mess on the floor so this will make it a little bit easier to clean it up. Is cut in the backsplash with the brush. You want to put it on pretty thick and then just kind of smooth it off, smooth it out after you get it put on there. And then you also want to take and put some along here 
two inches so you don't have to run your roller all the way up to the backsplash. Okay, so you want to put the paint on just pretty thick. And then once you get it on there, you don't really need to worry about being real pretty with it at first. And then take your roller and then go back over it and just kind of smooth it out. Just take through and smooth it out like that. Just kind of go back over where you kind of just spread the paint on. You want to do this quickly because this stuff dries really, really fast. They actually say to keep your fans off, windows shut, and possibly even put in a humidifier depending on the area you're in and the humidity levels of where you live. All right, so after you get the paint on there, you want to take this wetting agent that comes with it and just kind of spray it over the entire area. Okay, so just go ahead and take this here and uh, get the chips and uh, make sure you just kind of liberally get it on there. Get the chips wherever. And they say just kind of the more the merrier when doing this. Because after you get the chips on, you go through and sand it. And to do this side here, you just kind of have to throw it at it. We've got the base coat applied, and we've put down the chips. And I've also gone through and sanded the top. I'm just preparing it for the... Um, the clear coat, protective coat that goes on top. Once you sand the top, it kind of turns a, a little bit hazy, but that'll actually go away once we um, get the clear coat on there. There's a few things that you need. Once this dries, you've put the base coat down and you've put the chips down. After it dries, you've got to go through and scrape the excess chips off and there'll be quite a bit of loose chips and then you can take and brush them into a little pan or what works a lot better is to use a shop vac. Uh, it takes a lot less time shop vacing the dust and the chips off this. I'd highly recommend uh, using a shop vac. But once you get the basic you know, the, the bigger chip scraped off, then you've got to go through and sand it. The kit comes with a couple sanding blocks. Um, you primarily use this sanding block here. You want to have this surface actually fairly smooth. The reason why you want to have it fairly smooth is the clear coat uh, really isn't much of a filler. Um, so what you feel here is what the end product is going to feel like. It also comes with another sanding block that works a little bit better for the backsplash and uh, along the uh, corner edges. A couple things that have happened is I got a little crazy here with the sanding block and you can see I've sanded through right there. You can see a little bit of green. I'm going to have to go through and touch that up before we put the, um, the clear coat on. Now what I'm going to do is take a little bit of that base coat, put it on the end of my brush, and just kind of dab it on the spots that I sanded through there a little bit. Just take a little bit of base coat, put it on the edge of your brush, and essentially just kind of dab it on there over the green spots. I got some green showing through in a few different areas. So I'm going to go through and just kind of dab that on where it's needed. Alright, so once you got your touch-up areas uh, dabbed with the base coat, you want to get some of that wetting agent 
and just spray over the spots a little bit. Then you want to take your chips, have them handy, ready to go. And essentially what you do is just grab a little dab of them and throw them on. Just take a little dab of those chips and just throw them at the little spots. Okay, so we've um, applied the clear coat, the top coat. And it's turned out pretty dang good. And overall, the project has gone pretty easy. Um, some tips with this uh, clear coat stuff. Uh, you want to put it in a little pan like this. And grab your high density roller there. And uh, just like you do the base coat, you put it on pretty thick. Um, just kind of put it on and then this is very important that you go in just one direction towards you on all the strokes. Basically to smooth out your top coat, you just kind of go over it. And once you've gone over the whole countertop one time, smoothing it out, re-wet the roller and go over it again in that same even direction. You want to get it on there fairly thick but at the same time, you want to get it smooth. Um, so you want to make sure you don't have gobs of it on there in spots because when it dries, you're going to get, you know, a little bit of gobbiness on there. Um, it doesn't look too bad, but there's a couple spots where I should have, um, you know, thinned it out just a little bit. Overall, I think it still looks really nice. Um, a couple key points with this top coat is basically, you know, you cut it in using your brush around all the edges just like you do the base coat. But um, don't bother trying to clean it out of your brush. Go ahead and throw it away. So don't use your best brush that you have um, on that uh, because uh, it's virtually impossible to get that top coat out of your brush. Um, also use um, rubber gloves on your hands. Um, I didn't and uh, I had that base coat on my hands for like uh, three days. It wasn't very pleasant. Um, pretty nasty feeling. So make sure you you get some rubber gloves and then don't bother cleaning your brush. Just chuck it. Alright, do it yourself Bry here. Finished a Rust-Oleum countertop transformation. Got away, got rid of that ugly green color and uh, we put in this nice tan uh, fleck. It turned out really nice. We really like the way this looks. It seems to be real durable. It looks really nice. Uh, the project was fairly easy and uh, something that I would definitely recommend doing. We went ahead and changed the faucet uh, there to give it a little bit uh, cleaner look. And uh, we also uh, changed out the light fixture up there with a little bit more updated light fixture. So overall with the, with the new countertop transformation, faucet and light fixture, this bathroom's got a lot uh, 